Welcome back, everybody, to the Hearthstone Pro Am tournament brought to you by NVIDIA. Our last series of the day of week five is RDU versus 6 0. And uh, RDU versus 6 0 is fun because I think there's a little history that people don't know about that I like to share. Um, both these guys are in a Skype group and, you know, basically a clan of friends outside of their own teams. We know 6 0 is on Archon, RDU is on uh, Nihilum. Uh, but they're also like in a group that they call themselves Assault the Boys, where they watch games together, help each other practice, and generally show some camaraderie. And uh, these guys uh, not only are on the Assault Boys, but they're also highly competitive on the Assault Boys, where like there's times where they get so emotionally heated, they remove each other's off friends lists and then re add each other later because they realize it's just Hearthstone. So I'm looking forward to this one. I think uh, it might get a little heated, but probably not because these guys ultimately, no matter what happens, are still uh, you know respected players and peers. So I'm I'm gonna have a lot of fun watching who wins this one, man. Yeah, and both of them uh, can be quite aggressive players. So it's always I always like seeing aggro mirrors because uh, the decision making is usually very crucial, like uh, to how the game. Uh, Go sorry, I've lost my words here. But um, yeah, they're both using mirrored lineups actually. So uh, we might actually just see complete mirror decks with a few tech tech cards. Uh, I mean, Zoo's come back into the the format, and Sixo is infamous for his Zoo deck. So it's more than likely he's going to be running that. Yeah, I mean, Sixo with Zoo is um, it's almost an alliteration, like Six Zoo or whatever. But uh, you know, it's it's almost not. If what Sixo likes to do, he likes to play fast, brutal, efficient decks to legend, and that's almost become his claim to fame at this point. Uh, people don't really, people unfortunately don't remember Sixo too much in his tournament runs, even though he's had several successful attempts at, at tournaments. Um, they just remember that he hit number one legend again, probably with something like Hunter or Zoo or you know Miracle like whatever had the most brutal win percentage at a fast speed, and. Uh, you know, he's a guy that focuses on that kind of aspect of the game, making sure that he can optimize his win percentage in every capacity. RDU, on the other hand, he's a guy who's playing almost the same exact decks, although we don't know if uh, they're, you know, it's, if it's Handlock, if it's Zoo. We don't know if it's, you know, a more slower Nylum Druid that has Ragnaros and Nourish, or if it's going to be more aggressive and fast, like the standard mid range. So that's what the differences can be. Uh, I don't really think Rogue has seen too much difference outside of Oil Rogue. There's been a few interesting movements within Oil Rogue, like playing more minion-based versus more spell-based, but I think that's still being figured out at the moment um, based off Black Rock Mountain. Yeah, we've seen a Doctor Boom come into the Miracle Rogue, uh, Miracle, sorry, Oil Rogue recently, and yeah, I think the the liner. I think uh, Raji is probably going to be running Zoo as well. And I would like to see a, a mirror, actually, because it then comes down to draws and a lot of mechanical skill and decision making. Um, the life coach, uh, the druid life coach user, which is the, their kind of signature clan deck, is very interested with the nourish and the rag, speeding things up using like double drake and stuff. But they, like you said, they're going to be the key differences in these decks. Just little tweaks here and there, personal preference. And we actually see, wait, is that oh. a Mildred mirror? <laughs> Yeah, actually, both these players are bringing, uh, you know, I was talking about fast druid versus, uh, you know, maybe slightly slower mid-range druid, but didn't account for the possibility of seeing uh, the mill druids. This was, uh, of course, popularized uh, a couple months ago by Crit Parian, actually. He was one playing a lot on stream, and then it, it wasn't exactly the most optimized list. It had really funky stuff like Tree of Life and some other... Really, no way. How's that supposed to actually work if you draw it? But Tides of Time recently did very well in Kingwin with it the same weekend as Gfinity. And well, we're about to see what happens when both these forces collide if they're in the similar vein. I don't even know how to call this matchup. Uh, I mean, they both the objective is so strange because they both want to deck each other out, but I guess it'll just come down to a bit of board aggression, really, because you want to you want to beat your opponent as fast, you want him to fatigue faster than you so i guess uh we're gonna see some minion wars but yeah i, I don't know I've, I've never i don't think i've ever seen a, a kind of a high level milled through matchup so this is going to be really exciting right so the key to this is to not overextend um and uh, with your removal because you have to like the, the person who wins is the person who gets to keep the minion on the board and do a little damage 
you can almost have the same exact thing. You're going to use mass AoE with Starfall and Poison Seeds. You're going to force them to draw mill cards. Uh, the most important thing then is how you get those small differences, such as having a minion stick on the board. Like having these Grove Tenders is actually a pretty big deal. So that way you can kill the board and still do a little bit of damage. First on also a big deal, you want to dump your hand as soon as possible. That would also be excellent. But, um, I mean, this this is still going to be a little bit awkward on both ends. Yeah, but I think, like you said, Farasun is a, a really good pickup here because you can empty your hand quicker. So when he forces you to draw your opponent, um, it doesn't have such a negative effect as it would if you couldn't dump your hand as quick. So um, Farasun, I I'm interested to see how much difference Farasun will make in kind of the hand war. But I can imagine it's going to be quite heavy. Yeah, already you playing this cold blade, unfortunately, is going to mill him too. But, you know, dumping out that healing touch might end up becoming a problem. Force nature, not as much because I guess it's still damage, but removal isn't as uh, high of a priority there. It's it's the cards like Naturalize, which might be the big swing. Um, really humorous that both these guys will most likely re attack each other's face because just that's not what this deck does. This is just chaos. <laughs> it's just it's all sorts of stuff getting this guy. We just saw a healing touch and a heal bar. I, I don't really know how to comment. I just they just go hand. I just go toe to toe with removal until seven sticks, and when that minion starts chipping away at them, uh, they'll gain a bit of an advantage because they'll be at the life uh, the life advantage. But there's still a lot of healing to cycle through first before we might see that making a difference. Well, the uh, Emperor Thorazin is actually a really big deal. It'll help him dump cards much more efficiently. Like being able to utilize that and then make. All, everything cheaper like it, it allows you to dump so much more efficiently naturalize becomes zero mana in fact so <laughs> you can play big cards and then uh naturalize when you have nothing else maximize it look at that you starfall on the wild pyromancer that became a three five for two mana and of course he just uh you know used starfall so maybe you can use the the emperor as well <laughs> already is clapping but six is just gonna dunk this with another starfall <laughs> Yeah, Sixo doesn't seem bothered by the appearance of this uh, Emperor. Like you said, it's probably just going to get Starfall. But that's two Starfalls gone. But in this matchup, you're not going to see like a lot of minions being played all at once. There's, it's going to be a one or two at a time. And um, you still have Poison Seeds, which can deal with anything big, like the, the new card. Um, I can't remember what its name is. The... Uh, the new taunt card that's in Ardu's hand. Uh, the Volcanic Lumberer is what it's that's officially what... called. So yeah, so turn a 7, 8 into 2-2 two, two is pretty good, regardless if you haven't got Starfall to follow it up. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of... What's nice is that if he has an opportunity to have one of these stick and do double combo, I mean, <laughs> there's that's a lot of damage. He might actually just kill 6-0 because he's able to the volcanic lumber early his opponent used naturalizes already i mean by all means if Sixo can't deal with this might be in trouble but there is poison seeds uh and poison seeds gives an opportunity to use keeper the grove and get some board momentum how does he deal with the second one is he going to be forced to combo to not die to the second volcanic lumber i'm not sure i think i think so and he can even get rid of this uh just keep it if he wants to naturalize. Because six. No, he just decides to keep it. But I think it's a good, a good idea, actually, because he's got volcanic lumberers coming his way eventually. And six has already had to throw a poison season two star falls uh, away already. And it's quite early in the game. It's only turn nine. And, and Ardu still has access to these cards. And getting that cold light's going to be great for him because he's going to be able to naturalize straight after and probably make him overdraw. That's and right. Get seven and get seven damage to the face. Yeah, uh, I'm just calculating how much damage he has. Uh, it's going to be 21, still a little bit short, but he's going to load up more minions, forcing his opponent to mill. Got picked up his second uh, force of nature as well. It's just a lot of damage and pressuring. This is an opportunity for RDU to start really going forward. Losing poison seeds, pretty big deal. So now Sixo is going to have to combo clear out of here. Uh, he also can leverage the Innervate with the the uh, the Wrath as well. 
Oh, he's got the naturalize. This is looking really right. good for Ardu now. Because Ardu has, hasn't used as many removal options as Sixo. And um, he's got the board as well. But the one thing Sixo does have over him, he still has both his volcanic lumbers sitting around. But I think that's a naturalize in the corner. I'm not sure. It's hiding behind the healing touch and the overlay. Or is that just another healing touch? Yeah, I think it's two healing touches. Yeah. But Poison Seeds deals with this fine. Right. So you Poison Seeds and then you Force of Nature. Is that what you do? I, I, I mean, I got to admit, man, I'm a little bit lost, too, in this matchup. I guess I Force of Nature wouldn't matter because Force of Nature, like, he has so much heal in the deck that he could easily bounce back up. You're, like, if you do four damage to, or six damage to face, like, big deal. It's up healing up eight. I think the combo is literally there for they've 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 either fatigued or fatigued enough damage where a combo would just beat them and that it just speeds up the fatigue war I guess and I think it's a, a really effective way to deal with it um, with just waiting around for them to to, to die to fatigue and it, it if because it speeds up the game so so much as well it gives them less time to respond to the fatigue as well. I mean, if he develops enough board here, he might just, just have lethal at some point. I think that's worth just having in a deck like this. But honestly, this mirror is very rare. <laughs> uh, especially in the, of two, uh, two players of their caliber playing it out. Mm, yeah, yeah. looks like uh, one force of nature is enough to clear here. You can take your time. This is starting to get down to like the really important parts of the mirror. Both have lost a fair number of cards. Oh, he's calculating how much he can do with uh, two Force of Natures and a Savage Roar if he can innervate that out. Is that enough? Yeah, yeah. I think so, problem. actually. <laughs> and that, that should be lethal, right? Wow. Oh, my goodness. That's so crazy. Who would have thought Mildred would actually burst this much? <laughs> it's incredible. What the hell? Oh my god. That's 20... Uh, yeah, that's uh, 30 damage right there. Well, GG, that's over. 6-0 uh, is out of... Uh, oh, sorry. RDU is out of that Mildred mirror and with a win, won't be able to play that anymore. Um, meanwhile, 6-0 will still have to win with that deck. And I, I always like playing mill decks against control. It's really fun. You know, Control Warrior, for example, really easy one to punish. Handlock being a super fun one to punish. Poison destroy the Giants. Naturalize kills the, the Drakes. Um, you know, you actually even Keeper of the Grove. You don't even need this, uh, the Naturalize. Like, those kinds of stuff. Really interesting to see how it faces off against it. Against a deck like Mech Shaman or Hunter, it's, it's always dicey because you have the removal, you have the heal, but if it doesn't line up sometimes you get rolled over yeah i think what's going to be great is we get to see this mildred deck again and because we've got two rogues it'd be interesting to see that matchup as well because obviously rogue relies on drawing a lot of cards but druid could probably push them into discarding quite a bit if they're a bit too uh a bit too eager with their sprints perhaps so yeah i'm, I'm actually glad we get to see another mill mill match hopefully if sixer decides to roll with it again well, I I really don't know those matchups against other things too well. I haven't got a chance to explore that Druid deck um, myself. But if I have to, uh, you know, theory craft a little bit, I think against combo decks it generally doesn't do too well because it it provides them the combo pieces uh, to punish them. That said, I'm not sure what kind of warlocks both these guys are bringing. One could be bring Handlock. One could bring Zoo. One could bring Demon Lock. One. You can bring combo warlock too that you know with the OTK style double power overwhelming with Thorazin. Or it could just be pirate rogue <laughs> on both ends. Something's a little fishy here, man. Both yeah. these guys bringing Mildred, both bringing pirate rogue. I think they just they, maybe they just felt like they woke up this morning they're like, you know what? Today I'm gonna bring Mildred, Pirate Rogue, and whatever. And all of a sudden, they're in this match. Like, oh, snap. We both bought the same decks. Who would have thought? But being in the same Skype group, eh, I consider that pretty unlikely. Well, I mean, it could be realistic. 
basically that these guys were like talking about ideas and sharing it and then like saying, huh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should play it. And he's like, yeah, maybe you should play it. And then both of them did end up playing it. Or maybe they decided <laughs> they wanted a 100% uh, kind of skill-based match. It's all down to mechanical skill and decision-making. So we'll play mirror decks and we'll match them up in a mirror as well. <laughs> I mean, that could be what they could have. They could have like had a secret agreement for, perhaps. Well, it's not really a secret anymore. I think well, with not. these guys playing back and forth. Um, the thing about Pirate Rogue is that they're really supposed to be an aggressive deck, and when you have a bunch of awkward cards like Assassin's Blade, it becomes a lot harder to leverage something like Jeeves. I don't think I've ever seen. I, I've only ever seen this deck played once or twice on Sixers Dream. I haven't seen much else, so I guess they're probably just gonna fight for fight for board and then just try and burst them each other out, or maybe they'll just go all in. I, I'm honestly not sure. They they're giving us matchups we never see, like mirrors we never see at this kind of level of play. Mm, Sixers had a pretty big advantage because RDU can't really utilize Jeeves. He has to play from behind, and now uh, he can play the. Uh... Oh my gosh, it's South Sea Captain. I, this is like Hearthstone Jeopardino for me, man. Like, I don't know these cards as well as I should because I don't really see it played that often. It's a good thing that RDU did clear that off, the one I cheat. Otherwise, Cold Blade would have absolutely destroyed him. But 6 at a really big advantage right now. I think, yeah, I think Six was at an advantage as well because he played this deck to legend, if I'm. Well, maybe not this specific deck, but he's played this pirate. Pirate Rogue, Pirate Rogue Legend before, so he's got a lot of games behind him and experience of this deck. Whereas Ardu, I can't imagine has played it as much as Sixo. Uh, well, the thing about ooh, he picks up the Bloodsail Raider. The thing about uh, what Ardu was doing that, that I was pointing out is that he doesn't have a way to seize back the damage race, but uh, Deadly Poison on Assassin's Blade is one way to do it. Bloodsail Raider is another another. Well, least considering how it's in tandem, but that blade flurry will shut it down. You just play the dread course there. All right. Oh, he has a South Sea captain as well. Six is just That's got a everything lot needs. of burst. Is that lethal? Six, ten, sixteen, just barely. That's right. Wow. Just one off, man. So close, but. Uh, are you? Can he strike back? No, that's not a good card to have. Arcane Golems. Arcane Golems clear. Um, there's almost no way that Six O can't pull his opponent, right? Because almost like I feel like this this deck tops out very or yeah, very low mana cost. Well, he's just giving himself he's just giving his opponent spells anyway to activate that eviscerate even if he cleared the board of the two arcane golems it's very likely he was going to draw a spell which uh lets him finish it off it's just crazy how fast this deck is actually yeah well it's it's a aggro deck essentially um you just go really hard use cold bloods shadow steps for extra points of damage blade flurries to clear it's fun but uh looks like the the creator of this pirate rogue ends up in that mirror it's a one one and uh, i guess that means that this Warlock deck will most likely be a troll deck. I don't even know what it's going to be. I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess... Uh, OTK Warlock. That's that's what I'm going to guess here. What do you so think? So an, an OTK Mirror? That's, yeah, that sounds, that sounds about right. If you were going to troll someone, that would probably be the deck you use. I mean, maybe have, uh, maybe Dragon Handlock. That card's also, that's also been experimented a little bit. Playing Dragons like Ysera and Handlock, and you play Blackwing Technician... So you, you curve out by playing Technician on turn three, um, uh, Twilight Drake on turn four, and then Belcher on turn five. And then it's just like this series of huge mid-range creatures that you can't deal with easily. And then, of course, <clears throat> instead of having like Jaraxxus, you have Ysera. So that's, it's a pretty interesting approach if they choose to do that. Of course, they might just simply slam Zoo and just go for it. Maybe Mech Zoo, just completely try to own their opponents. Why not? Well, they're keeping us in suspense right now. I just don't know what to expect. I mean, we've seen Pirate Druid, we've, uh, Pirate Rogues, we've seen Mildred, so it could be anything, really. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. I, I mean, how do we even talk about these matchups? 
I mean, Mill Druid. Well, Iron I mean, Rogue I'm, struggles against uh, Druid, I think. Or normal, normal Druid. Just because Druid's really good at setting up defensiveness with like a Wrath on for one, you know? That kind of stuff is good. Harrison Jones, if they have it in the deck, is great. But not not necessarily Mill Druid. Mill Druid is interesting. There's because it's just basically cards that draw and cards that heal and cards that remove. There's no taunts. Taunts are like the big enemy of that deck. That's why you need to really leverage sap as much as you can in that rogue deck. I mean, the I, know, I always feel just... like pirate rogue is just so inferior to oil rogue in so many ways. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a weak backspace rogue as well because it kind of has the same agenda because it's just like super aggro, but backspace rogue had been built and designed to beat your opponent as fast as possible with lepanomes and so it had all the cards for the aggro uh, whereas um pirate rogue has to use the pirate synergy and not all the pirate cards are kind of based around that kind of like that quick win and some of them are quite not very not brilliant like i, I mean a four one's very easy to deal with most of the time i mean if you can stealth it that's great but you're not always going to get the opportunity to do that so they're both decided on what to queue up now. I imagine. I mean, I would like to see a warlock mirror. You might as well keep. You might as well keep the theme going if you're going to be playing mirrors. Yeah, uh, I, I guess at this point, because of how unpredictable it might be, you might as well. It. Oh, looks like they're playing murlocs. Of course, I I should have seen this from a mile away, but I, I didn't. <laughs> Oh this is the man, obvious Murloc one. War Leader though. That's so big because it buffs on both ends. Ardu doesn't even know how exactly how to trade this down. I guess you just. Uh, I guess you just so, trade, right? I don't know. I was, we just, just rush your opponent saw, down. We just saw Ardu celebrate when he played. He, it, he forgot. Then, he forgot <laughs> that it buffs all Murlocs, man. He didn't read the text on the card. He played too fast. That was definitely a sequencer. <laughs> Uh, this is crazy. Dude, just hit, just hit the face, man. You got this, RDU. Nah. <laughs> this is so dumb. He's playing yeah. too honest now. <laughs> oh, there we go. So now Implosion has to hit for uh, at least three. 6 is pretty good at these Implosion things, though. Uh, did I jinx him? Oh, oh I did. Oh, now RDU has to hit Implosion for... Uh, as much as he wants. Oh, actually, he drew a uh, knife juggler and a void walker. That's pretty decent, too. No! He hit the face. Both these guys getting relatively unlucky for their circumstance. Defender Varg is pretty huge here. But of course, this is where Implosion's gonna wreck him, too. Uh, this game's crazy. <laughs> hit the Argus for three or more! There it is. Juggle to the face. What's? I feel like everything I've seen recently is like juggle to the face. I guess it's trade his war leader, which isn't desirable, but he's got direwolf alpha and imp gang boss, which allows him to pick some really good trades. It doesn't matter if he's off curve. In these type of uh, quote mirror matches, whatever the hell you want to call this, priority is board control, 100%. Oh, oh another implosion. Wow. And he gets a direwolf wolf alpha as well, so you can even increase his uh, trade value. What's he gonna do it on? I guess a two free. Oh, I guess a two this time. Oh, but the knives make up for it, right? Sort of. He gets yeah. one more knife. Yeah, and he gets a trade. I think RD is gonna run away with this game right now here. Uh, unless Sixo whips out the old anti murloc mirror tech, and that's Hellfire. No. He also, Sea Giant would also been good too. No, I think that's it. Game is over. RDU takes it. He is the murloc king. So Sixo loses a zoo mirror. I know it's murlocs, it is, but it's still a, a zoo mirror. <laughs> I don't think Six would be look, happy with that. You look very entertained, Aqua. These guys are putting on a show, man. No, I'm, I'd like, I'm, I'm, I am entertained, honestly. It's, it's, I think the Mill Druid match was probably the most exciting for me because it's now becoming a competitive deck, so there will be situations maybe in the future. We don't know what, how Blackrock will progress with uh, Mill Druid, though, but there may be situations in the future where we have to see that mirror. And so it was interesting to see that. The Pirate one was a bit ridiculous, and that 
Van Murloc uh, mirror was a bit ridiculous as well, but what do we expect? <laughs> the, the, the type of decks uh, create ridiculous matches, I guess. Yeah, so, I guess so. Um, I'm, I'm actually having a lot of fun watching these guys play stupid decks. I mean, they're, it's very clear that they're not trying their hardest, but, uh, you know, who know, who cares, man? The fact is uh, these guys are known for being a little bit too intense, and they decide to collectively troll the viewers with stupid bad decks but you know what's really funny is that i'm pretty sure that they like 6-0 would hit legend with all of these decks at the beginning of the season he could do it definitely oh well, maybe not the maybe not the Mildred, but definitely murloc zoo as yeah, well anything as Pyro aggro. i mean 6-0 is like an aggro master here's so. the strategy man here's the strategy all you do is play everything till rank one five star, like play Oil Rogue or Mid Range Druid or you know whatever Mech Shaman, Mech, Mech Mage. Then when you're at rank one five star, you queue up Mill Druid and you would just say Mill Druid hits rank like, like Legend first in the season six zero, and you get the screenshot. That's all that matters. It's a screenshot. This is also what you do. You're at rank two Legend. You queue it up. You somehow get like the most perfect matchup with Murloc Zoo, and you win. And then you post onto the forums, rank one legend Murloc Zoo, new meta, question mark. Of course, you take the screenshot and you show the proof there. That's that's how you do it, man. It'll be on the front page of Harpoon, I imagine. For sure. And then you'll have about 50 comments saying, right. I've lost three games in a row with this. This deck is garbage. <laughs> and then you win, because that's ultimately what you wanted to achieve. You just wanted to troll the internet. <laughs> Make them lose those stars they value so much. Oh man, RDU's got a pretty disgusting start, but you know there's a lot of anti anti aggro right now in the hand of uh, Sixo. So even if he goes for this blood sale radar, it's insane. Sixo's going to be able to remove it with that. Yeah, anyway, I mean Sixo could potentially bring this series back. I mean he's got two aggro decks to face against, and if he can uh if he can get some healing, some good board, get some good removal. I mean I guess Mildred is one of the decks which could deal with this. Um, I mean, it depends how fast it becomes. So we can see an arcane girl, and that's that's pretty damn good, I suppose. And the tinkers. He's got the wrath, though. He's he's got answers. He's got healing. I can see Sixo taking this. Nah. I, I, <laughs> well, but let's just see, man. There's a lot of damage. Uh, you're gonna need to hit the healing. I think that uh, Sixo was thinking about ramping a little bit with growth tender, so that way he can play his uh, cards a little bit faster, but that also gives more opportunities like what you just saw there, the Dread Corsair plus the oil to do damage. But he's just lost six damage there. That's six damage gone. Because they didn't get to attack. And uh, he's yeah. got a heal. He's got a heal in his hand with Ancient of Law. I mean, it only takes him to draw a heal in touch. And uh, he'll swing straight back up. And But the problem is, I suppose, with Mildred is against this. You're feeding the aggro deck cards all the time. Yeah, exactly. So, so where do you sustain, I suppose? What at what point do you sustain against an aggro deck where you just constantly give them resources? Dude, I don't know, man. I think he's just going to play Poison <laughs> Seeds on this thing. Or swipe, swipe re reasonable as well. I guess you don't want to play Poison Seeds because it gives him a 2-2. Two -two. I guess it's different, strategy honestly. Could... I guess the strategy could be you go for one for one with the aggro deck oh, and then you sick. heal and you never give him any cards. And well, you just, he's going to gain I, cards himself. Look at this. Doesn't matter. You, just hit him to the face, draw two cards, get your second arcane golem sh shadow step. Do you want to shadow step now and get the card back? Okay, guess not. Doesn't really matter. Oh, wombo combo. Ah, this is sick, man. Pirate Rogue's doing work. New meta. What has Six on Ardu done? <laughs> what have they done to this meta? Oh, this is tough. Like, what do you do? You want to remove uh, the Jeeves, at least, I suppose. So I guess you just have to force. And you could innovate nothing out. <laughs> you could just... inter You could innovate out the key to the grow. I don't even think poison. Actually, you can innervate poison seeds and make the tree and stay. Uh, oh, that's, that's so that's so good. Why didn't he do that, uh, dude? If, just... you had two, if you had two two twos on the board, it'd be really effective against this, as opposed to having to use keeper the grove defensively. 
And more burst damage. We do see the antique heal bot though. He's, he's going to be able to top him up a little bit. Nah, oh, man. 6 0 should have used poison seeds. And that's like what you do with force of nature, actually. Now that I think about it, you rush six damage on turn 10, and then you. Uh, then you use poison seeds and make them stay. I think the that combo's it, OP now that I think about it. I mean, yeah, I think it would have worked because he would have had minions. He could heal up now and still keep the board. Wait, is he going to face tank this? Yeah, he's just going to heal up, I think. After he uh, plays Keeper of the Grove, he's going to use inter inter uh, the, um, the anti-kill bot. I think there's one thing to note with RGU right now is he's drawn excellent cards. We haven't seen any ship's cannons yet. We haven't seen any South Sea um, captains or any of that kind of clunky stuff yet, which won't no, you be as effective. I mean, he's gotten so unlucky. He hasn't. He, you're exactly right. He hasn't drawn a ship's cannon, man. That card is a linchpin of making this deck work. Uh, he just keeps going face. He's going to run out of damage. 6-0 drew perfectly. Look at this. This is disgusting. He drew a healing touch and he, uh, ancient of lore. Wow. 6-0 is such a lucker, man. Look at this. And he's pretty much almost back to full. Oh, wow. That's useful. <laughs> yeah. Too I bad mean you can't shadow step and eviscerate. I mean, this is what you do now with 6 so You don't even need to play Cold Light. You just hit Hero Power, pass. And when he plays something, you respond to it. And then you know, it's such a life. It's so high in life that I do just can't come back. Oh, he drew it too late, man. <laughs> Ships can, not enough. But what he can do is play a pirate next turn, shadow step that pirate, and play it again, and get Ships can in value. Gets two damage, damage off of that. That's kind of like Demolisher on with the battle cry. And that's that's kind of ridiculous, in fact, if you think about it. No, oh, he is going to get Oh, Captain, oh, Green Captain Green Greenskin. Oh, he just used his last charge of Deadly Poison, too. Well, very clearly, Sixo has to starfall the face here, but chooses to go for a minion. That is ultimate BM and a misplay, all sequenced in one. I mean, he, he considers poison that... Seeds, man. Do it. I mean, maybe he considers it a threat. You did put a good combo there. You know, that uh, mini demolisher. That's what he's scared of. Well, sap <laughs> makes means that he uh, gets to buy a little bit more time, I believe. Captain Greenskin buffs this to a cog hammer or a stormforge axe. Allows him to, to attack... And then he played blade blade flurry. You know why? I was actually curious why he didn't shadow step green skin here. Because that would have oh, yeah. been. If he shadow stepped green skin, he could have buffed it to a 3 4. Already, he was clearly not practiced very much with Pirate Rogue. I, I, I question his, his, uh, his methods here. <laughs> he needs some coaching from 6 0. Obviously, I think that 6 0 would have done the exact same thing. He would have saw that yeah. and did it. It would have built his own Assassin's Blade, right? 3 4. Come on, that's crazy. Can he? You can't actually kill him yet. <laughs> he did actually. He did live for turn. Ah, I gotcha. He can uh, innervate out another Ancient of Lore and heal. It's actually quite humorous how close this game actually got. Where Sixto's, like, he's healed an absurd amount. Upwards up to 25 health, like, somewhere around there. And, uh,. Despite all this, RD still got him down to almost single digits, so ridiculous stuff. But uh, looks like 6-0 has managed to stabilize, and you know what? I have to, again, say that I think RDU's pirate skills are not high enough. 6-0 is the South Sea uh, captain. I guess he's just a deckhand RDU. He needs more training. Swap the decks for a couple more years. He might uh, get up to 6-0's level when he takes him onto the full crew. Agreed. Agreed. That means uh, we have the uh, the pirate rogue from RDU versus the Merlot Zoo from from Sixo, I believe. Yeah, and I have to imagine that actually Sixo is a huge favorite to win this game because I think pirate rogue is uh, one struggles against board control tactics, and two, it's it's bad. 
So there's that. <laughs> I mean, it is still Zoo, so you'll be able to out-trade uh, Ardu, unless Ardu just gets a god hand like he did last turn, because he just drew none of those pirate cards that uh, may have slowed him down. Everything he drew just was really fast. But I think actually some pirates would help Ardu in this case. You know, that ship's cannon could do some work, trade, uh, kill some murlocs, get some two-for-ones, three-for-ones. All right, here we go, man. Last chance for redemption. Already you keep that ship's cannon. It's going to be so key. He does. He keeps it for the curve, but more importantly, he keeps it for the pirate synergy. He's going to need that uh, that effect. It's going to be really yeah. useful. Don't laugh, man. It's actually a real powerful <laughs> thing. Imagine if he just shoots down a direwolf alpha or flame imp. Are you kidding me? Like I said, it could be two free for one easily if he draws the right pirate to go with it. I mean, South Sea Deckhand straight away. Oh, what's the um, what's the four one called? Uh, the one that gets stealth. The one eyed shoot. One eyed shoot. Right. Yeah, the, the, the one eyed shoot would be really. Good. But the ship's can is not a pirate, so he can't sequence it away, um, and gain stealth. The stealth would be really useful against things like implosion. Not useful against things like knife juggler. Yeah. Oh, that curve though from six zero. And he's got the cold light seer. I don't even think uh, you. This is actually the nuts. You you can't beat that hand. Wait, you gotta play for a uh, deadly poison. He's got the. No, option. it's not possible. I don't I don't care if you have blade flurry and and gore howl combined. You can't come back from. So where are all these pirates? I see a lot of kind of aggro rogue stuff. Like oh, spells. Wait, it's over. Well, actually, you're you're completely right. You know, on a serious note, the the blade flurry is a really big deal. The bl the murloc warrior, though, man, that is so crazy, so strong. Holy cow! Uh, and he's got the old merc. Guy. Oh, too late. We never got to see the ship, uh, the cannon do any work. Well, I mean, you you can't really blame him. Sixo had the the god opener. And he has the Grim Skill Oracle. How is this even fair? This is actually insane. Like, he, he can do so much big plays here. Or he can go for the more, like, slow, board-centric build-up. Play, like, uh, Void Caller with the Murloc War Leader. No, no to go all in. And, of course, uh, he will not be rewarded because I think there is... No, wait. Actually, he doesn't have enough damage to clear everything with the Blade Flurry. So when Blade Flurry go, when Bla Blade Flurry resolves, it, I, I, they'll keep the health until the uh, War Leader dies, right? So they'll be on right. one health each. So yeah, it doesn't even clear. So he needs to, uh, he needs to kill off that War Leader as soon as possible. Yeah, let's see some could... cannon shenanigans. What are you doing, Artie? Put that, put that cannon down, man. You, you need to kill off that War Leader first. Okay. Yeah, he's so he's gonna. Right. He, okay, he's gonna use that as an eviscerate. Totally justified. I thought he was gonna use the the South Sea, but I guess he's gonna try to use that as a combo enabler. He's got a lot of blade flurry damage, man. If he was able to set up a weapon, put up like oil that South Sea, that's that's like a twenty damage blade flurry or something stupid like that. Old Murky coming down. Is he going to trade here? Is he afraid of the cannon? Dude, everyone's afraid of the cannon. Are you kidding me? So, he, again, he just made scene? oil... Uh, oh, my God. Actually, a second Blade Flurry doesn't help. He successfully made Blade Flurry worse again in that turn. I mean, the, the War Leader made Blade Flurry worse. Now this has just made Blade Flurry worse. Six or no, so what's going on? <laughs> nah, he's got another way to buff the Merc Eye, though. He's got the Tide Hunter, and he's got the uh, Defender of Argus. Pretty crazy stuff. I think six has got this, man. Yeah, I can't. Oh, he's got a Taunt. Don't think he'll do anything, though. Oh, it's nice. Mm. You just Assassin's Blade, and you uh, play the South Sea and knock out the... <laughs> Knock out the Merc Eye. Or you can consequently play the Dread Corsair, too. Okay, so you can do that. Do both. Middle of the run play. 
Yeah, I finally gets rid of that Murkai. Lots of what? imps in this deck for a Murloc deck. I don't think it's sticking to the theme, really. Actually, that's a board clear next turn. Interesting. Interesting. Ah, the plot thickens. Although, if you do board clear... Oh, man. If you do board clear, um, unfortunately, your opponent leads back behind two 1-1s, one and that means you're one power of overwhelming from dying. Such a such a strange card in Gambos's interactions with uh, the area effector. Oh, he just gets the uh, oh, such a piece of sergeant. Wow, and that's gonna do it. Looks like RDU gets outthought, outplayed, and outskilled. And 60 wins the series three two. Man with meta defining decks. What do you think about that? Maybe this is the future. Maybe this is. Uh how the meta is going to shape after seeing this series. I mean, this is a, a high-level tournament with uh, some high-level players in it. Maybe this is serious business. But how do you finish that game with a smile on his face? So it's not very, it's very rare you see a pro player smile when he loses, but I guess he, they both played the same stuff. They had a bit of fun with the series. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, in the end, it's just like the lighthearted side of... Uh, of you know, Hearthstone, people are just like, you know, taking it a little bit too seriously sometimes. But this, this match didn't have too much uh, impact on the standings overall. Uh, both these guys are still going to be in the finals in a couple of weeks. So uh, in the end, don't worry. It's not like RDU eliminated himself by playing Pirate Rogue. But he did lose three games with Pirate Rogue, I believe. So I think he just really needs to shore up some of his skills or even go back to the drawing board I was bringing to the table. Um, but, you know, I, I had a lot of fun today. Four series are down and over with. We've had a pretty good set of eight games. Which was, what were some of your favorite moments? Um, although they were very brief, I did, in, I did enjoy the very quick games because it just showed the power of those decks. Like, we had it from the Warrior deck, the Mech Warrior, and the Mech Shaman. So, uh, yeah, those games were really good. I liked the, Mild the Mildred Mirror. That was fun. Uh, Taj and Strife Crow had some excellent games where they had to make some really tough decisions, especially that Druid Hunter game, like right towards the end. I've, I think that was probably my favorite moment of the, of the whole uh, the whole day. Yeah, that was fun stuff for sure too. Well, we've had a lot of fun as well, uh, and we like to thank Nvidia for bringing this tournament to make it possible. Check out all this stuff at esports.geforce.com, as well as the Nvidia Shield tablet if you're looking for a cool, cheap, and affordable way to to hang out and play some of your games. You can check out the NVIDIA Shield, uh, which is, you know, you can play regular games on it, uh, or you can use it as a tablet to play Hearthstone. There's definitely a few, a few things you can use with that. You can check it out um, at all the products that NVIDIA generally has. Uh, we've also uh, still been accommodating the time change here on Wednesday because we don't want to conflict with Black Rock Mountain releasing, and then, you know, one of those things is we don't want to see the new cards. But it, it's, you know, it's releasing as we're like broadcasting it. So it's like impossible to guarantee. We'll, we'll just play Wednesday at uh, the same time next week. And uh, make sure you guys can check it out. Any final words that you want to talk about, uh, Nick, before we head off? Uh, just thanks for having me on the show. You know, it was a good experience. And it was uh, great to see what the pros were bringing for both fun and for being competitive. So it was a nice kind of mix, mix of matches. And uh, yeah, it was good fun. Absolutely. So a big shout out to our production guys. Uh, see you guys next week at 8 a.m. Pacific uh, from Frodan and Aquabot and everyone else here. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys next time.